Welcome to the JDM Trivia number 6. This week's trivia is all about the 1981 Nissan's driver guide system, which was basically a crude navigation system for the Nissan Skyline DR30 and the Nissan Gazelle and Sylvia S12. Nobody took a wild guess at the teaser from last week, but I'll get to the purpose of the antenna in this episode. In the 1970s, the most advanced navigational system for your car was a road atlas and a compass. Of course, the US military was solving that problem by shooting up GPS satellites in the sky from 1973 onwards, but the automotive industry also made attempts. In the 1980s, in Germany and the US, various companies used antennas to send signals by various radio frequencies, but this was a very costly business. Meanwhile, in Japan, Toyota, Honda and Nissan made their own attempts to solve the car navigation question. In 1981, Honda implemented a system called Electro Gyrocator, that sounds nasty by the way, and this system breathed tech savvy Honda-ness, as the system used a helium gas gyroscope to detect both rotation and movement of the car. The complex system required printed plastic maps, and if you're interested in the photos and background information of this system, Japanese Nostalgic Car Blog wrote an article about it. You can find more in the link below. In the same year, Toyota implemented a similar system in their Celica XX, but I was not able to find any information about how that system actually worked. Also in 1981, Nissan implemented their own Nissan driver's guide system that was a lot less complex than the Honda Electro Gyrocator. All the driver had to do was to set the direction and the distance and the driver's guide system would lock on its target. It would then display in 16 directions around the vehicle where to go and how far you actually are from the target. Nissan created this system using both directional sensors and velocity sensor. The velocity sensor was obviously linked to the speedometer and the directional sensor measured the movements compared to the Earth's magnetic field. Let's just say in advanced compass and layman terms. With a combination of these two, a microprocessor continuously calculated the distance and set a new direction to drive to. This directional sensor really is a piece of art. It exists of a core that rotates continuously and uses a photo sensor to measure the position of the core compared to the car. At the same time, there is a magnetic detection coil used to detect the difference in magnetism. Every time the core revolves inside this coil, a phase voltage is created. The difference between two phases can then be used to calculate the directional movement of the car. Why didn't they just use a simple compass instead? Well, a compass is unreliable as the car around it is a big chunk of metal that gets electromagnetically charged while driving. So to overcome any interference of the car magnetic field, the directional sensor was mounted on a retractable antenna. Aha! So that's where the antenna is for. How well did this system work? Well, not very well. The designers of the system admitted in their publication that it doesn't work very well on long distances. And it was meant mainly for short distances below 10 kilometers. I have been told by many that Japanese cities are like small mazes and it's easy to lose your direction and you could end up walking in circles a lot. So even though the system is not very useful for highways and suburbs, it actually makes a lot of sense in the country where it has been designed. These are for next time. What do you see in this picture?